Understanding AWS instance types. I don't know how many of you are blessed like me to live in a state where there are in and out burger restaurants. Great burgers, really simple menu. You walk in and there's hamburger, cheeseburger, fries, and a milkshake. And that's, that's about all you can order. Or so it seems, until you find out In-N-Out Burger has a secret menu that nobody really knows about until somebody tells you about it. The guy standing in front of me in line, he's like, <clears throat> I'll take the 4x4 uh, four four animal style. <laughs> yeah, what what do you say? You know, so Amazon Web Services is the same way with their instance types. You start talking to people that live in the Amazon world, they're like, yeah, we're running five of the M9 or standard XL four quad instances in the Oregon region and you start it's like wh huh and then you look at the naming convention you're like what is what is going on so I wanted to create a micro nugget that helps demystify this once and for all here's what I'm talking about I'm in the AWS management console I'm gonna shoot over to EC2 I'm in the Oregon region let's go ahead and launch a new instance in this uh, region Use the classic wizard, that's fine. It'll be a uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 base. Hit this drop down, and bam, I see all of these different instance types that are available to me. I've got my M1, 2, M2, X large, 4, X large. I mean, you've got all these different descriptors for what they are. Over on the right side, it gives you a little clue of the differences, I guess, in a big picture. You know, we might have the question, what's an ECU? Uh, but th that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to describe to you. What AWS has done with their instances is created a cocktail of resources, including processor, memory, hard disk, storage space, and even other stuff that I'm not putting here. It's almost like intangible uh, items that go into the ins instances, blended them all together, and this is all the uh, instance types that are currently there. Now, first thing that might help in, in relaying some understanding on this is that people buy into these instances, meaning you can buy reserved instances where you literally pick one of these hardware platforms and prepay on it for essentially the next one or three years. So these instances, because they are reserved, when they lock them in, if you will, they don't change. You know, if it says this is the hardware that's that's included in an M1 large instance, then that's going to be the way it stays. And that's why you start saying instead of, you know, M1 large, you know, uh, announcement from Amazon Web Services saying, hey, M1 large has been upgraded. We've now added, you know, whatever. Instead of doing that, they'll come out with something like an extra large or an extra extra or, you know, there's our, our uh, In-N-Out Burger quad stack, uh, if you will, uh, instance that's there. So first thing is what's, what's with all the M1, M3, CG1 and all of that? Well, that is... Is where I wanted to put this key out there. M1 and M3 really stands for general purpose, meaning uh, when you see M1 instances, these are the normal, and I would say for a small to mid-size, whatever, whatever you're using Amazon Web Services for, web server, a remote desktop server, uh, you know, video streaming, transcoding server, what, whatever the case is, it's the normal one that most people use. Uh, that, uh, oh, my little parentheses ended a little early. Those are the general purposes. Memory optimized means that it is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, some of these I'm not even, you get it, right? Memory optimized, CPU optimized, as, it's, as in it's heavier on the CPU size uh, on those descriptions. And, I mean, it goes to their specific purposes. If you have instances that need more memory or processor, go with those. Storage optimized, they actually get up to uh, 48 terabytes of space included with those instances that are spanned across many, many disks. Uh, now, this guy, I want to talk about him for just a moment. T1 Micro, what's the story with him as a class of its own, right? He's the the free guy, right? When you sign up for AWS, you get a year free. Well, you get a year free to run a micro sized instance. Now, this guy is like the scraps. Uh, one thing to know about them is that he gets a performance boost at the beginning, as in he is throttled pretty heavily because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them because they're free for a year when people sign up. He gets a boost initially of resource access, and then it's like, whoom, he, he gets sucked dry. So, for instance, if you decide to run Windows on one of these micro instances, instances, the beauty of the boost is that it boots pretty well, but when you actually get in and you're like, man, it takes like five minutes for my start menu to open. It's not quite that bad, but almost. Um, that's that's where it throttles you back down to normal. So if, if these machines are idle, and that, this actually goes for just about every machine, if they're idle for a long time, they will actually get a boost of performance initially before Amazon, uh, we'll, we'll call them the Borg, comes in and sucks them back down to the normal uh, resource level they, they should have. You will especially see that with the micro instance, which when you start comparing that guy to a small from a hardware specification, I mean, if I were to go uh, back there 
And look at this. When you, when you see it, you initially are like, well, wait a sec. This guy gets up to two ECUs and he's free uh, versus the small. He only gets one. It seems like this would be the one to go with. No, it is not because these are like the two burstable, like if you're lucky kind of ECUs. This one is at least a little bit more stable. And of course, you get a little bit more memory with that guy. The last one is CG1, which is our GPU, that's Graphic Processing Unit Optimized. So if you, if you have graphic intensive tasks or you want to <laughs> mine for Bitcoin using AWS and try and become rich, by the way, it doesn't work. I've tried it. You just lose money. Um, that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, so let me take those away and bring up the, the next piece of this, which is some of the other options. Like, what is an ECU? ECU stands for EC2 Computing Unit. It is a make-believe way of rating processor resources. Again, coming back here and looking at it, you see all of these get about tw you know, 26 ECU, 13 ECUs. What it is, is actually, if you, if you look it up, it is a uh, 2007, as in the year 2007, uh, 1.0 to 1.2 gigahertz uh, Intel Xeon processor. Now, I know, first off, here we are in 2013, 2014 time frame, uh, and, and people hear 2007 and they're like, oh, you know, freak out because what are we doing rating things in the 2007 uh, era in, in our modern processing? Well, first off, they just needed something. I mean, processors change so often, and so Amazon needed something that when they spec'd out their machines to say, okay, this is about how much you get. That's also why they can come in here and say, well, it's about the equivalent of 88 ECUs. It's like, well, good grief, what kind of monster chip is that? It's not a monster chip. They're just saying it's it's the equivalent of putting 88 of these little uh, 1.0 to 1.2 gigahertz uh, processors together. Second option that you'll have when you go through and, and provision these services uh, is some of them will be EBS optimized. What does that mean? It means that when you Ah, oh, man, how do I even describe this in micro nugget uh, format? When you set up a, a, a virtual server on Amazon, so here's your virtual server, uh, you can actually uh, provision these for either, and actually I'll cover both, of that's how I'll do it, for either instant store, known as ephemeral, or uh, EBS-based storage, elastic block storage. So here's here's what that means. When you create your virtual server, I mean, it actually runs on some physical server. So I'm trying to think, see, this one looks different. It's a real server. It runs on a real server somewhere, right? And that real server has local drives that's known as the instant store or ephemeral storage. Also, better, more uh, common way of saying it is temporary storage, meaning as long as that server is running on that real server, you keep the instant storage. But as soon as you terminate that or, or uh, uh, stop that server, you may get all of that storage deleted. Now, that's that's what exactly what Amazon says. As soon as you stop running that server, it will be deleted uh, from there. So that's what ephemeral storage is. That's why we have EBS storage. Well, EBS is actually, you know, here's the physical server. The hard drives itself for your server are hosted on some other storage unit, probably a little uh, SAN, storage area network somewhere, right? Um, and so this physical server actually loads all of your information from this remote SAN. That's, that's where the, the hard drive data for your server is stored at. Now, the beauty of EBS, Elastic Block Store, is that it stays around. It lives on after you stop your uh, server from running. Uh, but the problem is when you run it on that physical server, I mean, it's crossing this network with all of the other stuff. This is stuff. That's what this line represents. All the other stuff that's crossing the network too. So you end up with slow hard drive access potentially because you're running over the same network line. So we come back to what is EBS optimized? EBS optimized, depending on what instance type you choose, will give you a dedicated 500 or 1000 megabits per second, or you can think of gigabit per second, right? Uh, link or access to the EBS store. So wherever your hard drives are stored at, you will actually get a dedicated 500 or 1000. So you're guaranteed. You, you can then say, okay, I know that my hard drive performance will be XYZ because I, I'm getting a guarantee on that. Whereas the non EBS optimized are, they're just sharing with all the other stuff and could go fast, could go slow. We don't know. Uh, last one is dedicated. Dedicated is useful for those organizations where they want to know they have their own physical server. See, the real server that runs your Amazon instances is shared among many, many clients. I don't know how many they put on one server. That's for Amazon to know and us to figure out, right? But you're shared with a whole bunch of other people. So not only does, number one, that violate some of the government standards that say, okay, for security purposes, even though Amazon guarantees it, they're approved, all that, you know, we still at the, at the government standards say that you must be on a different physical server so you can go buy your own server right and that's that's uh, dedicated your price goes up substantially obviously if you say I want a dedicated server at Amazon but it is possible
Last thing I want to show you is this website. If you haven't seen it before, this is an Amazon supported website, as in they make sure that it is all ac accurate. It's awsnow.info. I'm going to take you there right now. This is it to where if you ever want to know what are the current uh, instances, what are the current prices, where are these servers located, uh, EBS cost, I mean, brrr, I mean, just tons of information, essentially the pricing information of what is current on Amazon, you can go to that website. Keep in mind, this has been a sneak preview of Amazon Instance Types. I have an entire series dedicated to Amazon Web Services and everything about Instance Types and more over at cbtnuggets.com. Come on over there. My name is Jeremy Char. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.